Upvoting, how does it work? How can you get the maximum rewards? Where can you upvote? And what are some great practices for upvoting? Find out coming up next. Hey guys, my name is Spencer Kaufman. Thank you for watching this YouTube channel. It's all about making information known to you. We've got software reviews, plugin reviews, online hints and tips, social media how-tos, and lots of information about how to be successful on the Steemit blogging platform so you can spread your message, grow your following, and start making money online. Today, we are going to talk about upvoting. Upvoting is an amazing feature on Steemit that allows you to generate some thing called a curation reward. You can find good posts on Steemit, and if you upvote them early on, then they go viral, you get paid for prophesying or spotting that good content before it became great. So this is an excellent way for you to start earning some more rewards on Steemit. In addition, it's a wonderful way for you to make money on Steemit without having to post content all of the time. You may not like to write blog articles or you may not be a blogger. If you upvote other people who write those blog articles or who are bloggers, you can start reaping some of the rewards that they get on those posts. So how much do you reap? Well, you typically get 25% uh, of the whole post goes to the curators. Now, that doesn't mean you get 25% unless by some great chance you were the only person that voted on that post after the seven day payout or after the time of curation is over, which is not really gonna happen, that's not likely. So 25% is designated towards the curators of that post, which means depending on a number of factors such as your upvote weight, or uh, the vote value that you put on that post, you will get a portion of that 25%. So what can you do to increase the portion that you receive of the 25%? Well, there are a number of things. The first thing is make sure your vote value is large. You'll see sometimes that uh, people called whales vote on posts and the post may go up by $1, $5, $20 or even at some big whales, they make posts go up by like 50 or 100. That is a huge vote value. Those posts and those whales, they have something called high voting power. Now, when you get to 500 steam power, that is also called voting power, steam power, your steam power dictates your vote value. So let's say you have 500 steam power. Now, when you vote on a post, you will see something that comes up. It is a vote slider. This thing pops up when you click upvote, and you can choose what percentage of your vote goes to that post. So you can slide it from 1% all the way up to 100%, and that would be your vote value. The more you use, so like if you vote 100%, the more value you attribute to that post, the more curation reward you will get when that post pays out. Now, of course, remember, in our previous videos, we've talked about voting and upvoting and what it's about and the things that go into it, such as how many times you can vote per day. Roughly, it's like 10. If you haven't seen that video, I highly recommend it. You might get a card that pops up here. Click on it, watch that video, learn more about voting on Steemit. So for now, just know that your vote value, when you hit 500 Steam Power, you can choose your vote value. The more steam power you have, the more vote value you will have and the more curation rewards you will receive. So really, it's very simple. If you get more steam power and you vote with higher percentage, you will get more curation rewards. So that is your number one goal on Steemit is to accumulate as much steam as possible and power it up into steam power. If you're unfamiliar with these terms, check out another video that I've made on the Steam wallets, what is Steam Power, SBD, and Steam. Check that out, it is very helpful. Now, where can you vote? You can vote in three places on Steemit. Number one would be on your own posts. Number two would be on other people's posts. And number three would be on comments. So we're gonna talk a little bit about these practices. Voting on your own posts is something that is kind of a gray area, it's very controversial. Some people say, yes, vote on your own posts. Why not? If you like your content, which you should because you're writing it, 
vote on your posts. Show people that you like it. Other people say, don't vote on your own posts. Self-promotion is bad. You should be promoting other people. I'll leave that up to you. We'll probably talk a little bit more about this in a later video. Hash out that debate and see what the weight pros and cons are, which one we should do. For now, I would say vote on your own posts. That's what I do. I vote on my posts, but I don't vote right away. The general, the best curation portion is within the first 30 minutes of your post. So that is when if you vote on other people's posts within 30 minutes, you will get more rewards than if you vote an hour or a day later. So typically what I do is I vote on my own posts about 12 hours later after they go live because then I won't get very many curation rewards from my posts. I'm already taking 75% as the author. Why do I need curation rewards on my own posts? I don't. Therefore, I vote later. However, I vote on other people's posts as soon as I can. Typically, I'll try to vote on them within the first 10, 15 minutes. If it hits a half an hour, then I may or may not vote. It depends on what the value of the post is and how many other people have voted on it. Another thing you can vote on in addition to your own posts and other people's posts are comments. You can vote on comments, but keep in mind the value on comments is typically very low. Usually they rarely get above a dollar. Sometimes you'll see them uh, five dollars, but that's an extreme rarity. And in addition, when they stay under a dollar, remember that as the seven day period goes on until that pays out, the general pool of money available for voting could be dried up, which means that if people keep voting, money is taken from underperforming posts or comments and is attributed to the posts and comments that perform. So if you vote on a comment on day three and you have a vote value of 10 cents, by day six, that may be down to two cents or three cents. And then your reward on that comment might be like 0 .001. So it wouldn't really even be worth it for you. So keep that in mind when voting on comments. However, you can vote on comments. The best thing to do for maximizing your curation rewards when voting is to vote on other people's posts within the half an hour time frame. You can use things like voting bots to help you with this. We'll talk about them in a later video. I want to hear from you in the comments below. If you have any questions on voting, on voting on comments, on voting on your own posts, put it down there in the comments below. And in addition, read the other people's comments because you guys can learn a lot from each other. I'll jump on, help you out whenever I can. In addition, if this is your first time on this channel, I would love to have you subscribe. It's all about making information known to you so you can have the tools you need to make informed decisions on how to be successful online. Until next time.